And this starts with mourning our own sin. Blessed are those who mourn that they are just far off from God, and they get it. Blessed are those people. I was, when I was a teenager, I remember talking to somebody who was a slightly younger teenager, and um, he was seeking to be a, a good disciple of Jesus Christ. So was his girlfriend. But they recognized that every time they got together, more clothing came off. And then finally, they ended up in bed. And then as every time they got together, they ended up in bed every time. And they couldn't stop. And they mourned. They said, we want to stop. This isn't right. We want to stop. How do we stop? They mourned their own sin. Mourning, you see, begins by recognizing our complicity in sin. I'm a sinner. So are you. We've started the process of mourning by beginning there. And if we don't understand the gravity of our sinfulness, we're never going to truly fix the problem. We're going to try all kinds of other things that will just get around the problem, that will attack the symptoms, but it will never get to the depths of the problem. And we may even look like we're serving God in the process, but, but we're not. Sort of like the, there was a family circus cartoon I saw years ago, and it had all these newspapers across the kitchen floor from the back door to the living room, and it had muddy footprints next to the line of, of newspapers on the floor, and the little kid at the end saying, Mom, I didn't step on your newspapers because I didn't want to mess them up. That's what we kind of do with God. God says, here's my plan, here's what I want to happen, and we say, I didn't mess it up. But, but we're not really following what God called us to do. We're trying all kinds of other methods to fix the problem. And God says, I've got one method. See, we mourn our sinfulness, and when we do that, we're going to seek the true solution. And this is where Beatitudes 1 and 2 meet up very nicely. Because if we're poor in spirit, if we've said I'm humble, if we've said I'm completely dependent on God, I submit myself fully to God's will. What I want is now actually what God wants. I'm submitting to that. We then recognize in that humility how far away we are. The, the more humble we are, the more we recognize how, how short we fall from where God is. And, and we're, we recognize the promise that we have in Jesus through the death and resurrection. What a good promise that is, because if, if we don't recognize the fullness, then we just simply see what Jesus did on the cross as a self-help plan. But that's not it. We sang it this morning. No, we we're to be made a new creation through Jesus Christ. Not just a better version of ourselves now, but wholly and completely remade. So far off are we from the mark. And so we mourn our sin, we seek the one who can fix it, and then what happens is our sight is changed with that. By beginning with the mourning from self and distance, and then seeking the right fix through Jesus Christ, who can make us a new creation. Now all of a sudden it's like going to the eye doctor, and Jesus is sitting there. Is it A or B? A or B, that's clear. B or C, you know how you go through that? All of a sudden our sight is refined. 